the monsters lied to us. The media sold us these lies, and now they won't even remind us of one of the greatest lies told to the American people in U.S. history. And that, of course, is the lies about the Iraq war. This is why this is going to be a very important video, because that Iraq war, conservatively, people say in the low numbers, has cost a half a million lives. In the high numbers, a million, a million plus. But ultimately, we have this new article by the Wall Street Journal, who is one of the news organizations covering this, that is titled, Long Classified Memo Surfaces Warning of Perfect Storm from Invading Iraq. And Jason, this is, this is again, nothing new, but now we have more documentation just to the incredulous, just to the horribleness, just to the, the disgusting elements that were behind one of what people are calling the biggest geopolitical mistake of the United States. Now, let me just read off this article and tell you the exact details here, because there is a newly declassified U.S. intelligence memo that has unearthed that is showing a bombshell and is proving that a year, a year prior to the Bush administration's 2003 invasion of Iraq, that the White House was expressively warned in great detail of all that could and would go wrong in the regime change wars aftermath, including the Sunni Shia sectarian chaos and proxy war with Iran. This, of course, would define Iraq and the whole region for years following. And crucially, it would reveal that seven months before the U.S. invasion of Iraq, American intelligence officials understood that Osama bin Laden was likely alive and well and hiding in northwest Pakistan. There's a lot to unravel here, especially with, well, just a clear fact, the United States, especially George W. Bush, didn't care about going after uh, Osama bin Laden, a longtime CIA agent. They cared about, of course, a pointless war, which they know would cause an insurmountable amount of human suffering. And again, this is nothing new. I remember being a young kid, Jason, and uh, you know, protesting the Iraq war, looking into the research, seeing hey, the first Gulf War with the first Bush was actually also based on lies with baby incubators that never were with the PR company coming in, selling that lie to the American people. And also the fact that Dick Cheney, who was a part of that first uh, war in the Gulf, who was a part of Bush's administration, even came out on record in 1992 and foreshadowed exactly what this report detailed in 1992. And he said that we can't take out Saddam Hussein, we can't bring in more U.S. troops, we can't take over Iraq because this would leave us vulnerable to insurrection and guerrilla attacks. And then talked about this sectarian violence, talked about how this situation would create a disastrous, dangerous situation and would require a long-term presence of U.S. forces. Dick Cheney knew about this in 1992, but still, to the ramp up of the Iraq war, sold it to the American people as a liberating cakewalk. Absolute incredulous information. And again, now we're just getting more confirmation to how illegal and monstrous this entire situation was. And, and again, Jason, maybe we, we have the clip. Maybe we could just play it in the background. Why one of the reasons that I called Dick Cheney a terrorist to his face? Because he is, and this absolutely proves it, and this is absolutely insane, Jason, to get this confirmation, to get this information about this huge amount of human suffering that ultimately has created ISIS, that ultimately has created torture, spying, the destruction of our basic human rights here in the United States, all over the world, as well as trashing the U.S. reputation and having a lot of the people in the world hate us for this fake invasion that was absolutely based on total lies. And they knew what it would happen. They knew exactly. And they created this, Jason. Absolutely crazy. What's your comments on this? Well, I mean, 17 years later, thanks. Thanks for the memo. Some of us, Luke, some of us knew about this. There he is. There's old Cheney. Yeah, oh, and I Mr. asked him about the stand down orders in the bunker on 9 11. Again, just more complete lies, running, smirking. Uh, that guy, seriously cold blooded. I know there's a new film about him, uh, but, uh, and again, it unearthed some things, but imagine, imagine being that kind of monster, seeing the future, knowing the future, warning people about it, and then still going ahead with it, telling everyone it's going to be a cakewalk. That's well, crazy, Jason. Well, you know what? There's a couple things I do want to correct you on, uh, my friend. Number one, 
that you said when I was a kid. No, you were a young man. I remember these same times when I first met Luke. And, uh, you know, I'm a little bit older. I think I got like seven years on you, maybe eight, seven and a half, something like that. And, uh, no, this guy was one of the only people on the planet. Forget about just our country. There were a few journalists maybe in an informed... I remember, I remember the one journalist, I'm not trying to equate you here, that threw the shoe at Bush. But mm -hmm. let's be honest, man. This isn't just Dick Cheney. This is Paul Wolf. Paul Wolfowitz, this is Donald Rumsfeld, this is Colin Powell, this is Robert Mueller, all the, this is uh, Ari Fleischer, who's still in the media right now, Oliver And don't North. forget the biggest one, don't forget the one that Fox News pays close to a half a million dollars, John Bolton. Johnny B, he was another one, you're right, and you know what? Let's not go just Republicans, Joey B, that's right, Joe Biden was also big into let's go into Iraq. So was Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. but John Bolton's the biggest one. And this is room to worry because now John Bolton is in Donald Trump's ear and Donald Trump's pretty much listening to him, uh, especially against the Iran talks. Again, this is also just another, uh, sorry to cut you off, but I, I, I want to talk about this because the Iraq war geopolitically set up Iran to benefit from this huge investment, from this huge war that the United States is in. Now, John Bolton is also warning about Iran, which he helped set up by pushing this Iraq war onto people, which again, people knew, they knew not only that this would cause the havoc that it did, that this would cause ISIS, that this would cause the sectarian violence. They also knew that there was no WMDs. That's also another major lie that the mainstream media doesn't like to talk about. I have to commend the Wall Street Journal now, because other than that, I'm, I'm not seeing this anywhere. This should be headline news everywhere with the huge ramifications of it. But yet again, the mainstream media doesn't want to remind you of these very, very important lessons. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Jason. I cut you off again. No, you know, to, to that point, you know, here we have a Vox article I actually agree with. <laughs> this is from 2016, but they're like, no, really, George W. Bush lied about WMDs. Uh, no kidding. And the yeah. sky is blue. And, you know, there was a time, I would say, maybe 10 years before this, maybe close to 15 years before this, when the left was reasonable, when they were anti-war, when they were questioning Pro authority. Speech. Pro free speech. Do, uh, George W. Bush made free speech zones and the left went crazy. Thousands of people got arrested in New York City. I was there. The left cared about free speech and your rights and your privacy so much. And now they're like, well, doesn't matter. Uh, we Now the left is, you know, some protesters are literally burning down free speech signs in Berkeley like we saw. Absolutely insane. I'm sorry. I'm very emotional about this issue. No, it's crazy, man. And, you know, especially for guys, you know, you said, well, who does this benefit? It benefits nobody. No, it benefits things like Halliburton, you know, Cheney's other warmongering cor corporations. This is like why I wanted to ask you, Jason, why do this? Why be such a monster? Money. Greed. Power. You know what? You so you brought up Vice, the new movie. Um, it, it's out there now uh, in high def. You know, you can get the on demand, blah, blah, blah. Um, we should watch that and do a review. We should watch it over the weekend. Maybe we do a review for next week. We compare the Oh, movie. I already did. It was a good movie. Oh, you it watched it? not go fully deep into it, but it went, it went deep. It, went, it, went, it was good. It was actually good. I give it a four out of five, to be honest with you. All right. Well, I got to check it out because um, just like with uh, American Made, which actually is, is still got legs, uh, I did a comparison to what they put out as Hollywood fiction and then what was CIA fact. So I think that it would be important to do that. You know, Cheney is, Cheney was put in charge of the operation of emergency management, okay, which was basically um, the shadow government. Everybody knows it. He went to the PEOC before the plane strike uh, of the Pentagon. You tried to get information about that. In fact, We Are Change did get firsthand information from Norman Mineta on the record that he was indeed there before the Pentagon strike, that he was referring to the Pentagon strike. Yeah, in We his Are Change Seattle, again, breaking down the official story that it wasn't true with firsthand evidence with the people who was there, Norman Mineta. Sorry, go ahead. No, absolutely. And, you know, again, the 9-11 Commission report itself, despite media reports, d despite Mineta's testimony, said that Cheney did not arrive there till five minutes after after that strike and tried to contest that that was all about United 93 and people were confused. The cover-up's in, folks. The entire war that is still going on in the Middle East to this day is based on a lie, whether you like it or not, 
whether you despise Muslims or not, whether you stay up late at night and think jihadis are going to come into your bedroom and, you know, from under your bed and take over your neighborhoods, if you bought into that fear, I'm sorry for you. Because 9-11 is an international intelligence operation that used Muslim extremism to, to really fuck us over. That's all I can say. And, you know, you talked about low end, 500,000 people. Do you believe that number? Come on. No, that's the low end. It's yeah. probably a low lot end higher. Low end my ass. I mean, we know. Ramifications, especially after the first Gulf War, depleted uranium, chemical weapons used. Uh, again, absolutely insane situation. And guys, this is an important story. Share this uh, with your friends and family members. The mainstream media doesn't want to talk about this. The algorithms suppress us. They want to bring out – they don't want these bigger messages come, to come out because, again, this proves how the government – knowingly lied to you cost huge insurmountable devastating uh reactions that they knew that they were getting themselves into all based on a lie for, for causing human atrocities to the most hard this should be a lesson to why you should never trust government again and now one of the main person one of the main people responsible for this atrocity He's right in Donald Trump's ear. Why would you ever trust government is the real question that needs to be asked from the, all the information that we got, that we've gotten, that we understand, especially from this particular incident. Again, share this video. You're more important than you know. Thank you for your sharing, for your donating. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. We're only here because of you, and that's why I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.